Can you really use a 911 as a dad car? What are those rear seats like? Can you even get child seats back there? And then I'm gonna take this out for a test drive. And this isn't just any 997, 911. What does an Aston Martin owner think of the 911? Let's find out. My name's Ben and welcome to Dad Cars. So when I received the email from this car's owner, Jonathan, saying, why don't you come and do a dad car's review of my 997.1 CSR? My first question to him is, that's not your first dad car, is it? What did you have before? Well, let me run you through his list. And these are just my highlights. A 924, an E45 M3, a 645, Gran Turismo, dad car's favorite, a Fiesta ST, a Ferrari 308 GT4. God, I would have loved to have driven that. And he's always had something nice tucked in the garage as well, like a Caterham, an Elise, or an Exige. Oh, what a dream. Before we get into all the technical bits, I can't wait to get into these back seats. I've never sat in the back of a 911, so let's find out once and for all. How practical are they? How usable are the rear seats in a 911? Dad, we can both do it together. My first time sitting in the back yeah, of a 911. Am I gonna fit? <laughs> what do you think? Oh. Maybe. And this reminds me very much of being in the back of my DB9. Although, yeah, probably a little bit more headroom than the DB9. Okay, look, with the passenger seat there, this isn't too bad, I'm 5'11", and I could sit back here for, I don't know, an uncomfortable half an hour. Um, what about you, sweetie? What's it like in the back there? Yeah, yeah but obviously, unfortunately, you can't sit in the seat like that, can you? Because this seat belt is way too high up there on your shoulder, isn't it? But let's have a look at child seats, shall we? Right, so there are no Isofix in the 997 point one generation 911 and I do believe that the 997.2 it was an optional extra so I'm not a fan of rear-facing baby seats that are about secured but let's have a look if you can actually do it it is in there and you know what it's quite snug in there I mean this sort of transmission tunnel here it kind of does make it sort of wedge in there quite nicely actually I wonder if you lean the seat forward though right let's have a look could an adult actually fit here though Wow, this is a genuine, genuine shocker, okay? I reckon you could fit an adult in the front with a rear-facing baby seat belt secured behind you. And you definitely can't do that in the Aston. So you know, it's massively compromised, like my knees are resting on the glove box, but I do feel like I'm a sort of safe distance away from that airbag there. Now, there's no way you could fit a front-facing child seat in here um, because they would be right up against that airbag and you need this seat all the way back, but this is brilliant. You could take a 911 out with your wife, with a baby in the back, and potentially another child over here. But let's have a look at front facing child seats. How do they fit in the back? Now, obviously no Isofix here, so I had to dig out from the garage some of my old belt secured ones. But this one here is a more sort of conventionally sized one. So yeah, look, already we've kind of encountered a problem here. The actual sort of buckets of the seats. It's too narrow to get this seat in there so that's a fail but here we have my good old trusty travel folding front facing five point harness child seats and look so they fit in there however i can spot a problem here these seat belts are kind of fixed in a strange position you see this on quite a lot of two plus twos so this isn't going to be easy so look i managed to get it in there and it is pretty secure but let me show you the problem because of the position of that seat belt there fixed you see the void it's got behind? All of that potential space there with this seat. So there might be other solutions that sort of fit back here even better. I've packed in a big jacket that I've got. Sort of packed that in right there now. So that is lovely and secure. So this little arrangement I've got here today, you know, you've got a front facing five point harness, about to child seat. You've got here a rear facing baby seat. I mean, already this is very impressive, isn't it? I do think you'd be able to get some travel booster seats back here as well. So yeah, the rear seats in a 911 are genuinely genuinely usable with children. And you probably draw the line with teenagers, you know, when they start really shooting up, you know, they're probably gonna start complaining back here then. Oh, and I did reach out to Porsche um, ahead of this video and asked them if I could borrow some of their Porsche's own child seats. But um, but yeah, <laughs> my first contact didn't get, didn't get very far. Um, but I'll keep trying, because this won't be the last 911 I get on the Dad Cars channel. 
Daddy, you need to see the boot test. Yes, we have a look at the boot. Is the engine? <laughs> is that where an engine is supposed to be? No. No, it's a bit silly, isn't it? It passes the dad guy's boot test. I could actually shut myself in there. Now I'm pretty flexible, but that is very impressive. I was not expecting that at all today. Wow, would you look at that? <laughs> <laughs> now that's practical, isn't it? That's High five. Yes. Another <laughs> Right, so now you've seen just how practical and usable those rear seats are. You could really use this as a dad car. So you're gonna rush off to the classifieds, have a little look at 996s, 997s, and you'll notice they're very attainable money, very tempting. But I think there's a reason for that. These have been plagued with mechanical issues, bore scoring, IMS bearing issues, which can lead to catastrophic engine failure. So don't be tempted to pick out a really cheap car you see on Auto Trader. It's not too far away. Just turn up to someone's drive and drive it away that day. You really do need to get a pre-purchase inspection on this era of 911. Whenever I look at 997s, I always look at one which has had those problems already upgraded or had a, an engine rebuild from somewhere like Hartec or another reputable place. It's another reason why the 997 and 996 turbos are of interest is because they've got the Mesger engine, the legendary engine, that don't suffer from the IMS issues. But this today is not your standard 997. Oh no, this is an RPM Technic CSR. Let me tell you why this car is so special. RPM Technic are a UK-based specialist in the 996 and 997, and what they create is very special. It's a real stripped down to the chassis, nut and bolt restoration job. You get full engine rebuild for strength with an upgraded IMS bearing new suspension, lightweight clutch and flywheel, all in aid of getting a super sharp throttle response. You get a CSR specific exhaust modification, giving this car a lovely note. And the styling can be personalized. You know, the front bumper on this car, it's got a turbo style front bumper, but the CSR's signature ducktail spoiler is an absolute must. I mean, this thing is carbon fiber, which wipes off six kilograms off the weight of a 911 right where you want it at the rear. God, it's so light, it's scary, even <laughs> shutting it, I don't want to damage it. Right, enough of the whiffle waffle, Ben. You said you were going to drive it. Well, yeah, I'm about to do that now. But just quickly, has anyone else been in this situation? Just before I bought my Aston Martin, I had a kind of head and heart situation where my heart was saying, I want the V12, I want a car that looks that beautiful. I've always wanted an Aston. But then my head was saying, this is the thinking man's purchase. Get yourself a 997. I mean, I could even have got a 996 Turbo at the time. I'm really sort of excited to see when I take this out, what do I think? Did I make the right decision? Right, so here we go. Did I mention this is the first time I've ever driven a 911? Oh, and what a special one it is. But it's not the first Porsche I've driven. No, that was a Porsche Taycan Turbo S. <laughs> I do things in strange orders, don't I? You can see that video on the channel. Is it going to be bumpy? It might be a little bit bumpy. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Because yes, the, <laughs> the sort of spring setup on here is for driver enjoyment, isn't it? So this will probably be the most harshly sort of dampered and sprung car that I've driven on the channel yet. Oh, and isn't it lovely having three pedals and this manual gearbox. Oh, yes, it is certainly a bumpy ride. Now, I know this section of the road is particularly bad, but um, yeah, this section of the road's not gonna show this, um, this suspension setup in the best light. But the feel instantly with this steering, oh my goodness, it's wonderful. I know what everyone's going on about now when they talk about these generation of cars. really confidence inspiring because the car just speaks to you so much I mean obviously it's a bit greasy today I've got my little one in the back so I never really give it the beans around corners but oh god I could spend a lot of time in here So this is the 997 911. The one before it was the 996. So what do you reckon it was after this? What comes after seven? 
998. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? The 998. But no, the one after this is called the 991. <laughs> and then the one after the 991 is the 992, the current generation one. So what do you reckon the next one's going to be called? What, what comes after two? Three. Three, yeah. No, no, no. The 993 is the one that was before the 996. And the confusion with 911s don't, doesn't stop there. I mean, there's so many different variants. So the base model's the Carrera, rear-wheel drive. Then you've got the Carrera S, which is a faster rear-wheel drive one. You can get the Carrera 4, which is four-wheel drive. The Carrera 4S, which is the faster one and takes some turbo, turbo styling. Um, then you've got the Turbo uh, and the Turbo S. So yeah, it does get quite confusing. I'm not even going to go into the GT cars because GT cars don't have rear seats, do they? So they're not of any interest to me. So I can give you a real good sort of comparison of the interior here um, with the comparable of my DB9 because these were you know, both made at the same time. And the, the, the interior in the Aston Martin, if that car came out today, people would say that the interior is amazing and wonderful. Whereas in here, it's got a very modern classic feel about it. And I mean that as, as a massive compliment. So it's not as special place to be just sort of generally, but it feels a lot more of a modern classic in here. And, and that, that gives it its own sort of like special little feel, you know? Yeah, it's Yeah, you like the blue. It looks like blacky It is like really, really dark blue, isn't it? It's lovely. What's your favorite color? Pink and blue, yeah. So what, it just needs a bit of pink as well. What, like some pink, pink stitching? So this has also had the short shift upgrade as well. Throwing these gears in feels lovely. You can keep your digital dash. I like the analog ones, thank you. And honestly, look, the, the steering feel on here, I know exactly why everybody goes on about this generation of car. And I said earlier on, didn't I, like the 996 and the, and the 997, because of those sort of horror stories with, the, with things going wrong, the IMS, the, the ball scoring, it, it keeps the prices low. And, and they've been low and affordable for a very long time. But the good thing about that is that they are still the real analog mechanical 911. You know, the steering, feeling this is amazing. So if you buy right, get a pre-purchase inspection, or get one that's been upgraded like this, and you've got yourself a real lovely, engaging analog car. Um, so running costs then on these, I mean, insurance for a heavily modified 911, I think it'd be crazy, but it's, it's not. I mean, this car's owner, I think he pays sort of like just under 700 pounds. Road tax, about 360, half what it is in my uh, V12. Miles per gallon, this car's owner gets sort of like mid 20s, but it's a car that you always sort of drive a little bit spirited. So, yeah, mid 20s, I think, for this is fantastic. Servicing, I mean, what I think he said the last service cost about £350. And I mean, if you've got particularly a car like this, which has just been completely overhauled and transformed and made really robust, you're not going to have any sort of big scary problems, are you? So, so as long as you get yourself a good one, you know, it's had those upgrades should be all good the only problem is the next time I drive a 911 like a base 996 or you know a base 997 am I going to be disappointed after being absolutely spoiled with this car possibly I don't know we'll see 50 miles an hour let's have a look the throttle response is lovely oh it's so engaging you can it does exactly what you want been driving this for like five minutes and oh yes I feel so in tune with it already this was one of my fears with buying the 911 and why I bought the Aston I was worried that I'd buy a 911 and then <laughs> I'd become like so many where you're a car guy but you have lots of cars but you just go from one 911 to the next <laughs> because there's so much variety across the generations different models I can see why people get lost in them and then they just become 911 enthusiasts. This feels incredible. Daddy's run out of sweets. So do you know what that means? We're going to have to stop and buy some, aren't we? Because you can't do a dad car review without having some special treats, can you? So this might be the first 911 I've driven, but it's not the first time being in a 911. That was back when I was about 21. I had my MR2 Mark II and my good friend Colin 
who you might know as the Bearded Explorer on YouTube, he had a 996. And I can just remember whenever we'd go out in that car, I just couldn't believe that a normal guy, like, like you know, me and Colin, normal guy could, could buy a 911. So I think he paid like 12, 13,000 pounds for that car at the time. And it just felt so fast and so special, you know, I'm looking in the wing mirrors and seeing that shape with the shoulders there. It was so special. Anyway, shout out to Colin. Shout out to the Bearded Explorer. If you haven't checked out his channel, do it. He's the best at finding barn finds in the UK. The absolute best. Right, I'm just gonna go in and get you some sweeties. Oh. Gummy bears, right, is there a little slot back here to put them safely? Oh, look at that. Right, now, can I trust you to only take one when, when I tell you to, yeah, I promise? Okay, and then I'll leave them there for you, all right? All right, here we go. Let's give it a little bit here, shall we? Whoa, that throttle response. Oh, goodness me. God, this feels so alive and engaging. It really, oh, it really does. Oh, what a driver's car. What a driver's car. Yeah, you can have one, sweetie. And the exhaust modifications that they do with this car as well, they've judged it perfectly. So just driving around normally when you can't drive fast, it's not intrusive at all, but you can hear it there. But when you plant your foot down, when national speed limit sign comes up, oh, it sounds absolutely glorious. Now I'm aware, any seasoned 911 veteran watching this, I'm not gonna break any news for you. I've only just recently started my car journalist journey, haven't I? But when was the last time you watched a video with somebody who's driving a 911 for the first time ever. So maybe this will just bring back memories of the joy that you felt the first time you drove a 911. I'm gonna pull over here and give it a little bit. But let's feel that again. All right, let's go. Lotus Elise, supercharged Lotus Elise. Oh, it's just so responsive and so alive, so exciting. This is amazing. Now, I strongly believe it's no coincidence that the 911 is arguably the most successful sports car of all time, and it's got two rear seats. This is basically the ultimate driver's car with two rear seats. And the important distinction with that is, is that, you know, when children come along, you don't have to sell your 911, do you? You can still get children in the back. And it's also, it's not a car that you have to put off until all the children have grown up and moved out. Because you could, in theory, get them in the back seats. So yeah, it's not a point that I've often really sort of seen people shout about, but I'm shouting about it now. The reason these are so successful is because it's got those rear seats and I mean that means that more people can own them and more people can buy them. Because in 2023 Porsche will be celebrating 60 years of the 911. And just think over those 60 years and the, the, the amount of cars that they've produced, there must be countless incredible memories out there of, of dads having a 911 with their children creating memories and I mean for, you know people watching right now this you, you may your dad might have had a 911 when you were growing up and you've probably got really incredible memories of just seeing how happy and how much he loved his 911 it's incredible so the dad car's ethos I mean I, I, I might be the first person who's dedicating a channel to it and really shining a light on dad cars, but I think dad cars as a, as a subconscious thing, it's been around for so, so long. And I mean, I'm so excited. Every time I get an email from somebody or someone messages me saying, look, I love the channel. Um, I've got these memories of me growing up. My dad had this, that, and the other. And 
it's just so exciting and um yeah look i just i'm obsessed with it now so i just want to i want to really shine a light on this incredible aspect of car ownership having exciting cars like this whilst having children and making memories with them right so look we're coming up to a national speed limit now so daddy's going to go fast all right drop it down into second i reckon yeah 4000 rpm oh, oh my goodness a super engaging really connective analog feel like this but with rear seats and I think they've done it so if I had a hat on I'll take it off to you guys <laughs> summary then for the 911 997 CSR this is insane incredible and sweetie what's the um, what's it like back there is it too bumpy or is it okay it's okay yeah so, you, so you're gonna have a proper a proper engaging true driver's car at affordable money all things considered with 911s with that rear practicality, you could use it as a dead car. This is insane, absolutely wonderful, and I will own a 911 one day. But look, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, still hit that bell icon, because I only do one video a week, so please do hit the bell icon, because it makes a difference to my little channel. And yeah, like, comment, share. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one, bye bye. What else Jonathan has got tucked away in the garage? This car's got a lovely story. What do you think? Should we get it on the channel? Let me know in the comments below. So if your partner is telling you, look, you can't buy a 911, you can't fit child seats in the back, send her this video. And then if it means that you do end up then being able to buy the 911, you know, just you know, buy me a beer or um, buy me a coffee when you see me out and about. So I've just got back. Um, do I regret buying the Aston when I could have bought a 911? This car's blown me away, it really has. 
but I don't regret going with my heart. I had to have an Aston Martin and I'm so glad I have. But if a, a base model 997 or a 996 Turbo is even 80% of what this very special car is, then I wouldn't have been disappointed if I'd gotten a 911 and I can't wait to own one. Mario Kart, wow. What a time to be alive, eh? When I was that age, we had one of the classic Game Boys. Well, I love that as well. I think you can keep it. Do you reckon I should just keep it? If you wish. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't think he would swap for my Aston Martin. This is worth more than my car. Oh, thanks, mate. Hey. Thanks for me out. What? That's kind of you. Hey. Didn't get very far, did you, love? Why do people not let you out around here? Ah, I know why. It's because I'm driving a Porsche and not an Aston. <laughs> Is that real? I think that might be it, you know. I think it's because I'm driving a 911. Maybe one day when you grow up, you could have a car which is pink and blue. Pink. That'd be nice. The back is pink and the front is blue. Yeah. Can you buy that for me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What, you want me to buy it for you? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, if you work really, really hard at school, yeah. then Daddy might help you get a car one day. Dad, you need to show me how to drive a car. Yeah, I'll teach you how to drive a car. See that car? Yeah. That's a car that you're not allowed to have. Oh. It's a Tesla. <laughs> Only joking. I actually quite like Tesla. Mm -hmm. Will you have another sweetie? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to go on your driveway. I'm really sorry. I hate it when people go on your driveway and turn around, but I've got do it i'm sorry guys right you come and watch and make sure i don't get stuck yeah I'm getting right what no there is no the, the um the engines at the back there it's not got a boot in there that's where the engine is isn't that funny <laughs> is that silly yeah the engine's not in the front the engine's at the back engines are supposed to be at the front or in the middle aren't they Ow! <laughs> God, it landed on my back. <laughs> that could have been so bad if that cogged on my head. Have you seen all of my other dad car videos? I've done loads of them now, and they're all really good, so check them out. Please do check them out. Right. And I won't back down. No, I won't back down. <laughs> 